Welcome, everybody. This is Joe Estorino, CCIE number 24347, and I want to talk to you all about how to pass your CCNA certification. This is something I hear all the time from students. They want their CCNA, they want to go after the knowledge, they want the certification, but it's just a bit overwhelming. They don't know where to start, and they don't really have a set written out uh, goal of how they're going to get from point A to point B. So I want to share with you guys my four steps to getting your CCNA certification. So let's jump right in here into step number one. Number one is going to be find your personal motivation. Now you've got to figure out for yourself, why do you want to do this so bad? Okay. Now there's a lot of answers to this question. There's no right or wrong. Okay, it could be that you just love networking, you love knowledge, and you want to prove to yourself and to potential employers that you know how things work, you know what's going on out there. It could be you want to improve your job situation or your professional life. I know for me, this was huge. Back 12, 15 years ago, I was working at a help desk, fielding calls, you know, generally doing tech support. But I loved communications. I loved networking. I wanted to take my career to that next level. And I knew that people that were great at networking seemed to always be CCNAs, seemed to know all this stuff about Cisco. And that's what I wanted for myself. So that was one of my motivations. Okay, it could just be you love the process. Whatever you do, figure it out for yourself. The reason you want to do this is that it's going to motivate you and it's going to fuel your journey as you go here down the road. When you're studying late at night, when you're sacrificing your personal time, one of these nights you're going to ask yourself, why am I working so hard? Why am I doing this? Figure it out first before you do anything else. Okay. What I would say to not do, do not do the CCNA just because it's a requirement for something like school or a promotion, you know, it's just required, but you don't care about the technology, you don't care about being passionate about it, then I would say don't go after it because to truly be successful in this industry, okay, you have to have a personal motivation to succeed. Okay, so let's take a look here at step number two. Step number two in the plan is simply to create a plan. Okay, now CCNA is like any other goal in life. If you read up on successful people and what they do to achieve goals, okay, they follow specific patterns. So we're going to do the exact same thing here. Your goals, whether that be CCNA or anything else, goals need to be specifically defined, okay, on paper, on purpose, you write it down, okay, until you write down your goals, okay, it's just a dream. It does not mean anything until you figure out specifically what the goal is, okay, so write it down on paper, on purpose, and also your goals need to have a specific deadline. Set a date, a specific date by whatever it is, December 10th, 2015, I'm going to sit the CCNA exam, okay? Write that down, okay? This tends to motivate you. And then what I like to do is make it real. Schedule your exam and actually pay for it. That's right. Put up the 250 bucks or whatever it is now for your CCNA exam. Get it paid for. Get it on the schedule. This will motivate you like nothing else. I still do this to this day. Okay. Even as a CCIE, I have to renew my CCIE every two years. Okay. When I go to do that, I put it on my schedule, I set a specific reasonable date, and I pay for it. This is going to help motivate you to stay involved, keep on your study schedule. So that's a really good tactic here to use, schedule and pay for your exam. Next part of your plan should be knowing what you're up against. What do I mean by this? It shocks me how many people uh, I talk to that are going after CCNA that do not know anything about the official blueprint from Cisco. That's right. Cisco tells you roughly what general topics you need to know for the exam. Go over to www.cisco.com slash go slash CCNA and you'll find there you'll be able to download the blueprint in a PDF form or it's out there on the web and you can go through and start systematically studying these topics and making sure you know it. You can't possibly prepare to be successful if you don't know what you're up against. Okay, so go get the blueprint, print that thing out, put it in front of your desk, go over it often, 
and know what you're facing in the exam. Then you're going to want to get highly, highly organized, okay? Now that you have the blueprint, you can master one major blueprint topic at a time, okay? Now you can devise an actual realistic study plan that's very, very detailed. What I like to do, I look through a blueprint, I find my, uh, my study resources like books, videos, blogs, whatever it is, and then I'll write it down. You know, set mini goals. Read a chapter a day from the CCNA official cert guide. You know, read a chapter and take notes. Plan to do it at a specific time with specific goals. Okay, so step two, create a plan. Now, step three is going to be to find mentors. Remember, guys, that other people, many, many other people have done this before. There's nothing wrong with learning from their mistakes, learning from their knowledge, picking their brain to put you on the fast track. Okay? Now, if you don't know any mentors in real life, you're just out there on, you know, online. Maybe you're working a job that you don't know any network engineers or people that are CCNA certified. Well, even online, these mentors are everywhere in the world we live in now. Blogs, Cisco Learning Network forms, other forms that are out there, YouTube videos, video training that you can that you can pay for. All this stuff is out there. So find either a real live or a virtual mentor. Use these people's resources. Use their knowledge to help put you on the fast track. Now, if you're working in a situation where, you know, maybe you do know some CCNAs or CCNPs or CCIEs, you know, maybe you're working at the help desk, but you sit in the room next to the network team. Start making friends with those guys. Ask them questions. Generally, what I've found, okay, is that if you are willing to learn, okay, many in this industry are willing to give back because we've all been there. Everybody has to start somewhere. So you know what? Start asking these guys questions. You know, be willing to stay late, maybe at work one night, uh, even if you're not getting paid, if there's a, a big upgrade or something going on. Maybe say, hey, is there anything you guys need? Help people, uh, you know, rack and stack switches or something. Do the grunt work to have the ability to pick these guys' brains. A lot of times you'll find people are more than willing to give back. Okay? Hey, buy a, buy a guy lunch. Take someone you know, uh... CCNA or a CCIE and say, hey, man, um, let me buy you lunch. I'd love to pick your brain about, you know, spanning tree or something. It's going to be well worth the 10 or $12 or whatever it is you, you spend to take the guy out to lunch and, and learn something from him. So that's step three, find mentors. Mentors are going to put you on the fast track as opposed to you having to do everything yourself. Okay, very, very important. Finally, last and probably the most important is just do the work. Remember, guys, no certification that's worth anything is going to be easy. This is not a simple thing. That's why I don't put, you know, the four easy steps to get the CCNA. This is, uh, you know, a difficult certification to achieve. If it was easy to do, then everyone would have it and it, it wouldn't be worth anything. So do the work. What I mean by that is do it the right way. Spend your time actually mastering the concepts. Okay, don't fall into the trap of brain dumps and, you know, cheating, trying to find your way around how to scam the system, how to get around it. Because in the long run, you're only hurting yourself. You know, I used to do technical interviews or I've done technical interviews for many companies over the years. And we'd bring people in uh, with CCNA certification and I can tell you, if you don't know what you're doing, you know, because you cheated on the exam, people like me, we're going to know that within a minute of talking to you. Okay, typically I'd start out my technical interviews with uh, maybe two or three simple subnetting questions. Now, if you don't know subnetting, okay, that means you didn't prepare adequately for the CCNA in the right way. Okay, I can tell by by a asking you very basic questions questions within a minute, whether you know what you're talking about or whether you're completely full of crap, okay? And it's very easy to spot the people that put in the work and those that didn't. So guys, just do the work. You're going to feel a lot better about it and it's going to get you a lot further. Now, while you're working through these things, 
here's your three steps, okay? Three step system to mastering these topics. Number one, learning. That's going to be your theory and your book knowledge. Okay, this is reading the Cisco Press uh, CCNA exam certification guide, going to other technical resources out there like blogs, forums, Cisco Learning Network, YouTube, video training. This is the theory, the whiteboard, the chalk talk, figuring out how this stuff works. Okay, but none of that means a hill of beans if you don't know how to do it. So the next thing you got to do is actually get out there and put your hands on some routers and switches. Actually do the things you've learned about. Okay? Configuration labs. Practice the topics. One by one, repetition. That's how you actually learn. Theory and book knowledge, then you put it into practice. Finally, verification. Did you do what you think you actually did, in other words? Okay? So maybe you configured OSPF. Okay, how do you know it's working? Aside from the fact that maybe a neighbor came up and a route is there. Do you know the proper show commands? This becomes very important on the exam when you get questions, you know, that are just show command output and they're asking you in-depth questions about, you know, what's wrong in this situation, what's happening in this situation. You need to have that real world experience to truly master the topics. And then finally, I would say, take the practice exams. So there's many good, valid resources out there for practice CCNA exams. I would recommend you take those and make sure you're scoring at least in the high 80s, 90s before you go take your actual CCNA exam. So that about wraps it up for my four steps to getting your CCNA certification. Now to recap, Remember, first, you want to find your motivation. What's your specific reason for doing this? Second, create a detailed plan. Put a specific date on it and write everything out on paper on purpose. Know what you're up against. Downloading the blueprint, get organized. Master one section at a time and devise a realistic study plan. Step number three was find mentors, either online or in real life. And finally, guys, just do the work. Thanks everybody for watching. This is Joe Astorino. And if you guys want to follow me, follow me over at Twitter at Jay Astorino or check out my blog at astorinonetworks.com. Thanks for watching, everybody.